Good morning. Today we're going to make a cylinder and decorate it using the scraffito technique. Now scraffito is Italian for scratch. So you're basically going to scratch your design through a layer of colour to the background colour of clay. So we're going to be using as contrasting a slip or an underglaze as we can so that the uh, scratching design actually shows nicely through it. So the cylinder you're going to make will be about the size of an A4. When you bend it round, approximately that kind of size and shape. It makes a nice vase or a, a cookie jar or a container for spaghetti. Um, you've actually got enough clay to make it slightly higher or slightly wider. It's very difficult to find the right cylinder to wrap it around that fits it exactly. So I'm going to be showing you how to make the cylinder around a former that doesn't fit it exactly so that you have got more flexibility in terms of what you're going to be making. Um, now these are examples of students work, it's not glaze fired yet but that's graffito, and this little one, very simple and fresh and this one has been scratched and then the area around it has been scratched away and this student has looked at the texture of the background and the design as part of what she's trying to achieve. Um, it can also look very much like woodcut or lino cut. So, you know, sometimes people actually leave a bit of the colour in the background, like in there, the red is still there. So that's graffito in the middle and this is inlay. They're the two techniques that are most used in ceramics, I think, and um, my beginners always learn these te techniques because it's a good way to decorate into the clay using the clay itself and texture um, instead of just painting on as people do in these um, painting places where you can just paint ready-made ceramics. So you get really interesting designs and um, this one here is much more organic and free-flowing. Layers of colour and then uh, scratching through to reveal those layers. And this one is by Rika Meyer. She was one of my very first teachers. She's actually scratched through a black slip and then put a greyish glaze over the top. So you can build up layers and layers of colour and take it to a whole other level. And um, I'll also show you some techniques where they use not just one colour, but different colours, and then you can get um, quite specific in your design. So, um, the tools that you're going to use, these are specific tools that people use, sort of a uh, cup-shaped little pointy one, um, and then these smaller loopy tools. See, this is a handmade one. Um, one of my favourites is just a porcupine quill because it's thicker on, and more rounded on the one side and very fine on the other and you've got the option of both those marks. Um, I just wanted to show you how I made a little loopy tool out of a paper clip. So with a paper clip I opened it out and I just squeezed it there very tight and then opened it and then <clears throat> take something that you can wrap it around and get it um, stuck onto there with something, using some Gorilla Tape here. And then you can just make your own tool. <laughs> but if you can get to a ceramic supply shop, you can ask them for Scraffito tools. But as I say, a porcupine quill or a needle will also do the job. I think this should work. Um, I could also use putty hardening putty, like they used in that other tool. And there I've got a little handmade tool using a paper clip. How simple can you be? Um, right, so let me get on to demo how you're going to go about making your cylinder. Of your one and a half kilos of clay, Set aside about 300 grams for your base that you'll flatten out later. Then make it into a nice ball and wedge it up 
very well. When you think you've wedged sufficiently, then make your clay into a nice ball and press it down until it's about the thickness of a hamburger patty. Work in any cracks that you might have around the edges and then flip it over and over like a pizza um, to stretch the clay and keep checking against your template that it's going to fit. Remember that when you roll it, it will get it slightly bigger. Using guides on either side, place a cloth over the top of the clay and roll it with any kind of rolling pin until it's all an even thickness and keep checking against your template that it fits then smooth it at the surface of the clay to compress it and to get rid of the texture of the cloth with your credit card and then uh, you need to cut it to fit your template Then you can wrap your template tightly around your former, in this case a bottle of wine, and uh, roll it, picking up the clay, lining it up with the bottom of your former, and keeping it completely parallel all the way around and, until it's overlapping. If you've got a former that fits it perfectly, then you're fine, but this is the way you can do it if your former doesn't fit it perfectly. this loosely wrapped cylinder that I've wrapped around this wine bottle onto a piece of paper onto a board that I can carry around. I'm going to put this to one side until it's leather hard so that it's not too hard that I can't open it up and shape it. But this, leaving it like this, will keep it rounded and um, show you how to take it further. While that's drying, hardening, we can take our little piece of clay that we kept to one side and make a base that's a bit bigger than the base of our cylinder. Compress the clay on both sides with your credit card and prick any air bubbles with your porcupine quill. Okay, so now my cylinder is nice and leather hard, not too dry in any one place, but it's dry enough to support itself. So at this point you can open up slightly this join so that you can get at these surfaces. We're going to try to join it with a beveled edge so that it's not completely overlapped um, so we've got a completely smooth cylinder so to do that you can take the one side press it against your former and cut off this corner at a 45 degree angle this is a useful tool you can use the inside of a cling wrap cutter or a hacksaw blade. If you don't have one of these tools you can cut at a 45 degree angle from this corner inwards all the way down and then scratch it like this more or less. 
This is so that we don't have too much clay in the overlap. And it's a better join than giving it a butt end. There's more area that's joining than if you just join it together like that. So now I can take my fork and scratch that and cross hatch it. It's nice and deep so it makes a good bond. You see it's quite dry. It's no longer all floppy and collapsing. So that uh, drying would normally take a few hours. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting it in the sun because then you might get edges of it drying too much. Make sure it's scratched absolutely everywhere. And the other one too. That one I scratched and I cut at the same time. Then you need to make some slip out of your clay that you're using and water. Mix it up into a nice slurry. And then dab a bit on each side. Make sure you fill up every scratch with the slip. And when you join the two pieces together, you won't have any air trapped in there. Now, you see, I my cylinder is bigger than my wine bottle. So I mustn't press on this side, otherwise I'll strain the edges and crack it here. So I'm just pressing in the front here against the bottle. The paper's still in there so that it doesn't stick to the glass. Overlap it and bring the bottle or the former straight up to the side and hold it firmly and then tack it down. Up here it's not quite touching so I have to support it on the inside with my finger. Make sure it makes a good, good bond. Press it in very, very well. This is key to having a good join, is good pressure. If your top is not perfectly even, we can scrape that down later. Once you think you've got it well pressed together on that join, then you can take your trusty credit card Bend it, hold it over these two fingers and bend it with your thumbs so it makes a curve. And then press hard against your bottle. So it's keeping the curve of the bottle in the former behind it. Once we take the bottle out, we have to put a coil of clay on the inside of this join where we are, and on the inside at the very base. So now, this hasn't been drying too hard. Um, I'm going to take this and put it on here. Put this on there. Check that it's still nice and round. And then cut just about two millimeters wider than your base of your cylinder. Because that extra clay we're going to bring up over the join on the outside. So we don't have to put an extra coil of clay on the outside as well as on the inside. Then you can pick it up. Then you can scratch this one. Scratch a bit further than you think that the wall is going to touch because you're going to also be putting a coil of clay in there and later on you can't reach in there very easily to scratch for the coil of clay that you're going to put in. Always cross hatch like a little X. And then this one, pick it up carefully, 
and scratch here too. Cross hatching. Now you must be careful that you don't get the paper in between these two joins when you put it back on there. You put slip on both surfaces, making sure it fills up all the cracks that you've just, or the scratches that you've just made. And you put this back on. Oops. Actually, at this point, I could probably take the bottle out, but this helps to slide it around a bit. I can take it out if I want to. I normally leave it in so that I've got something to press against when I bring this up. Again, bend this and bring this little bit of extra wet clay up around there. Don't press down hard with your former, otherwise you'll cut into the clay below. So I'm going right underneath the base and pulling it up over that join. And then while I've got this bottle inside here, I can still refine this whole surface all the way up. Move the bottle to, to the side that you are smoothing, so that you're not pressing against nothing. Whenever you press, you must make sure you've got something on the other side of what you're pressing so that you don't distort your cylinder. So at this point I can take my bottle out and my bit of paper out afterwards. This is why you don't stick the paper onto your former. But you can take the former out first and then the paper. And then um, I've got a nicely rounded um, cylinder. Uh, if you have pressed very hard on the outside of your join, sometimes you don't have to put extra clay in the join there. But at the very least, you need to smooth it. So with a tool, you and just go sideways and smooth it on the inside like that, all the way down. If you can see the join very clearly, then you must make a very thin coil of very wet clay and put it in there. This clay is a bit too stiff, you need some pressure clay. The rim still needs some refinement. And we need to put a coil right inside inside that join so that it, it won't leak liquids and it won't crack later. So I'll take my clay. I'm rolling a really, really thin piece of clay. Sometimes you can't get your hand in there, so you have to do it by remote control. I like to use the back of a wooden spoon for that. Is a wooden spoon, it's nicely rounded, it's a bit like my own finger, um, and I'll use it for joining in there. But just to make sure that the join is wet enough to receive this, I'm going to, with a paintbrush, put some slip all around in that corner. And then 
doing that. And press it down into the into the corner. And guide it with the, the spoon. Go from one side to the other. Don't press it all down and then press it harder. Press really well from the very beginning so that the air comes out on the other side of the coil as you as you lower it in. You don't want to trap any air between the coil and the corner. Because trapped air can cause explosions in the firing. So I'm making good good contact, good pressure, and then when I reach the end, I just break it off and smooth it in using whatever you can. The other thing you can do is also get a sponge on the end of your stick and go around with the sponge after you've done this joining. You don't want to be able to see that coil of clay that you put in the bottom there. It must be perfectly worked in and that will make it nice and strong. If in doing this you have pressed out the, the bottom of a cylinder from the inside, then you must go around again with your credit card and smooth it back in. So now we need to refine the cylinder prior to painting our coloured coating of slip that we're going to sgraffito through. So to get the top rim nice and smooth and even, you can grate it with this surform blade from the hardware store. It's got like a little grater here. And that's the easiest way to get it completely even and then smooth it with your finger. Or else you can use your credit card or the back of a knife and just scrape it until it's even. So you need to wipe it with a sponge to get the rim finely smoothed. But then it exposes the grain in the clay so you need to push that grain back in with your fingers until it's smooth again. And then on the inside of the cylinder you can do this thing with a sponge on a stick and smooth it nicely. You can also smooth it all the way up. Um, so just be happy with your cylinder as it is. If you are making a handle you could put the handle on at this stage or a little lid. It's up to you. But this is a nice surface for us to decorate. So it needs to be leather hard like this to put the first coat of slip on. So you can use slip or underglaze stain. In this case, you're going to use slip. Your slip needs to be the consistency of cream. So put it on as thin as you can. Just spread it around so that you don't get brush marks. You just want it to be coated and as even as possible so it doesn't interfere with your design. Each coat must dry to touch dry before you put the next coat on. So this is now my third coat of very thin slip, waiting each time for it to be touch dry before I put the next coat on. You don't want the slip to be too thick, otherwise you stand the risk of the slip peeling off. And it's also more difficult to scratch through if the slip is too thick. Now I've got to leave it, possibly until tomorrow. Um, I want it to get back to being leather hard. It's wet up quite a lot from having been um, painted.
painted, but I want it to be on the side of dry leather hard rather than normal leather hard so that I can get a nice crisp clean line when I scratch my Scraffito design. And in the meantime I'm going to plan my design. I think this is going to be for spaghetti in my kitchen, so I think I'm going to do a spaghetti design. So um, that's my challenge and your challenge too is to find something that suits a cylinder. Um, cylinders are also perhaps easier to do if you divide up different sections and just fill in a pattern. Um, they don't have a shoulder like a bellied pot um, that you can focus your design on. So sometimes it's easiest with cylinders just to divide it up equally and then fill in the design. But if you want to just go with a doodle ram rambling design, that's also fine. So now I've got my three coats of thinly painted slip and it's dried overnight. It's fairly dry, um, but not bone dry yet. I want you to check the bottom of your cylinder. There, there must be a neat line around the bottom here. Because if you ever want to sell your work, that's something that the buyer will look at. So just scrape off any extra slip that's there. You can write your name at the bottom and run your finger around there. Make sure you're happy with, with the base. Then you have to plot out your design. I've decided to mark off different areas that I'm going to fill with design, with pattern. You can also draw your design on with pencil before you scratch. I'm just doing a light scratching here, so I'm not fully committed yet. If you make a terrible mistake, you can take your slip and rub off the line and then paint just that area. My paper clip tool that I made works extremely well. It gives a lovely clean clear cut and takes away the clay where you don't want any colour and then you smooth it off with a dry soft paintbrush, all the little burrs that develop. Mm -hmm. 